Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Hello there, a beautiful morning to you. You are welcome to the Daily Fountain program of the Church of Nigeria, Anglican Communion. Please, let us pray. Let's worship the Lord with these songs. When I come into your presence, I'm so happy. When I come into your presence, I'm so glad. In your presence there is anointing as your spirit moves around me. In your presence anointing breaks the yoke. Yes, you are the Lord most high. Yes, you are the Lord most high. You are, you are. Yes, you are the Lord. Most high, yes, you are the Lord. Most high, yes, you are the Lord. In heaven, on earth, and beneath the earth. Father, we worship you and bow before you. Thank you for the gift of another day. Lord, we come into your presence to study at your feet. And as you have come, may we never remain the same. Holy Spirit, we invite you to teach us that at the end it will be truly said of us that we have been with the Lord. Thank you, O Lord, for this beautiful day you have given us. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable unto you. In Jesus' most wonderful name, we have prayed. Amen. Yes, you are welcome. But let me use this opportunity to congratulate all mothers in the Anglican Church as we are being celebrated this week. The high points being on Sunday, the modern Sunday. It's my prayer that we all be mothers indeed. And to our children, biological children and spiritual children, we will be blessings to them in Jesus' name. And not only that, I also pray that God will keep us to enjoy the fruits of our labor in Jesus' name. Mommies, you are blessed. Mothers, you are blessed. Mother is good. Our topic today is the powerful and merciful God. The powerful and merciful God. And our test is taken from Mark chapter 7, from verse 24 down to the end, then chapter 8, from verse 1 to 10. From there, he arose and went to the region of Tyre and Sidon, and he entered the house and wanted to know one to know it. But he could not be hidden, for a woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard about him, and she came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by birth, and she kept asking him to cast the demon out of her daughter. But Jesus said to her, Let the children be filled first, for it is no good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she answered and said to him, Yes, Lord, yet even the little dogs under the table eat from the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, For this saying, go your way. The demon has gone out of your daughter. And when she had come to her house, she found the demon gone out and her daughter lying on the bed. Again, departing from the region of Tyre and Sidon, he came through the midst of the region of Decapolis to the Sea of Galilee. Then they brought to him one who was deaf and who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to put his hand on him. And he took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers in his ears and his pats and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, if a tar, that is, be opened. Immediately his ears were opened, and the impediment of his tongue was loosed, 
and he spoke plainly. Then he commanded them that they should tell no one. But the more he commanded them, the more widely they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done all things well. He makes both the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. Chapter 8 of Mark. In those days, the multitude being very great and having nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples to him and said to them, I have compassion on the multitude because they have now continued with me three days and have nothing to eat. And if I send them away hungry to their own houses, they will faint on the way, for some of them have come from afar. Then his disciples answered him, How can one satisfy these people with bread here in the wilderness? He asked them, How many loaves do you have? And they said, Seven. So he commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground, and he took the seven loaves and gave thanks, broke it and gave them to his disciples to set before him, and they set them before the multitude, and also had a few small fish. And having blessed them, he said to set them also before them. So they ate and were filled, and they took up seven large baskets of leftover fragments, now those who had eaten were about 4,000, and he sent them away. He immediately got into the boat with his disciples and came to the region of Dalmaunta. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The reading today is a demonstration of Jesus as a powerful and merciful God. God is a powerful God. Yet, he is also very merciful. We have three stories here that show the power of Jesus over demons, over deafness and dumbness, and his ability to feed 4,000 with seven loaves of bread and few fishes. You see, God is awesome and nothing is impossible with him. He has power over all situations. He is impossibility specialist. You see, we have different fields of life. And in those fields of life, we have different specialists in those careers who are authorities in those fields and careers of life. Is it in the areas of medicine? We have like gynecologists, we have uh, uh, oncologists, we have pediatrician. Is it engineering? Is it uh, in agriculture? Is it in education? So many fields of life that we have different specialists. But you know, God is a specialist in impossibility. He is a specialist in impossibility. There is nothing that he cannot do. And so as we come to him this morning, he will prove himself to you in that situation you have termed impossible. In that situation you have concluded that nothing can be done about it. He will do it and prove himself in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Of a truth, all things are possible unto them that believe. Luke chapter 1 verse 37. Even Mark 9 verse 23, if only you believe, all things are possible. In Mark chapter 7, 24 to 30, the first story here, we see Jesus healing the daughter of a woman that was demon possessed. The mother was a Syrophoenician, a Gentile, because she was not a Jew, so to say, she was outside the covenant. But she came to Jesus, begging, pleading that her daughter be delivered. But I want you to note something. Jesus told her that it's not good to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. That was rather harsh, one would say, very demeaning. Some people may not be able to take it, 
Some other may even want to fight Jesus for using such words on them, calling that woman a dog, you no know, reducing her to the barest thing. But you see, that woman was not deterred. She was not discouraged. Rather, she persisted in her plea. And she did that in humility. She wanted her daughter to be healed. She was dogged and refused to give up. Then Jesus, seeing her humility, seeing her faith, had compassion, had mercy on her, and just gave a word. And her daughter was healed instantly at that moment. That reminds me the story of Hannah and the encounter she had with Eli in 1 Samuel chapter 8, from verse 8 to 18. Hannah went to Shiloh, went to the temple in Shiloh to pour out her heart before the Lord. And that morning, as she was pouring out her heart, crying because of her childlessness, because of her infertility, that her mate at home was tormenting her, afflicting her. Then Eli the high priest, seeing her, thought that she was drunk and accused her of being drunk that early morning. But rather than being angry, Hannah replied in soft words that she was not drunk, that she was only pouring out her heart before the Lord. You see, when we come to Jesus, we should not be distracted. There may be challenges that want to distract us. People may misunderstand us. People may call us names, but we should see them as, distruct, as distractions and focus on Jesus. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, like that Syrophoenician woman. Yes, she was humble. She had that faith and, and said, yes, even children, even the dogs could, can, could pick crumbs of bread that fell from the children's uh, table. And the Lord Jesus, seeing that, decreed that word, and her daughter was healed. So we should come to God, we should come to Jesus with faith. Because Jesus is not only merciful, he is also powerful and can handle any situation. Like I said, he is the impossibility specialist. Even the case of demon possession. You see, demons are subject to Jesus. Just a word from Jesus delivers. Remember the madman at Gadara in Mark chapter 5, 1 to 20, when the demons, the legion of demons, when they saw Jesus, they recognized immediately, ah, and said, Jesus, please deal with us gently. Please don't destroy us. Instead, send us into those uh, 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 sheep. Don't destroy us. We, we prefer to possess the pigs. Yes, the pigs than destroying us. They recognize Jesus. They recognize the authority. They recognize the power that Jesus has. Please, I want you to know that Jesus told her initially that the Children's bread is not meant for the dogs, which means divine healing, divine deliverance is not just meant for anybody. It's not for everybody. They are first for the children of God. They are first for the sons and daughters of our master Jesus. Then ask yourself, are you a child of God? Is Jesus your father? Is he your Lord? Is he your Savior? Perhaps you have been praying and crying over a particular situation, believing God for deliverance, for deliverance or healing, and nothing seems to be happening. Surrender your life to Jesus. Surrender to the authority of Jesus. Make him your Father. Make him your Lord. Make him your Master. And you will see that situation turn around in the name of Jesus. 
Amen. And I pray that the merciful and powerful hand of Jesus will locate you wherever you are in Jesus' name. Amen. Then in Mark chapter 7, verse 31, the second story we have there about the healing of the deaf and dumb is a further demonstration of Jesus' power. Unfortunately, that uh, impediment defined the man because his name was not mentioned. You know, sometimes we see ourselves being defined by certain challenges, certain problems or disease that uh, we are uh, experiencing at a particular time. You know, you see somebody referring to us, hey, that woman that doesn't have a child, oh, that man that limps, oh, that girl that has a withered hand. You know, our challenges, our situations trying to define us. However, the good news today is that no matter the disease, hmm, no matter the ailments, no matter the impediments, Jesus the healer can set you free and will set you free. Amen. What did Jesus do to that man that was deaf and dumb? He simply put his finger into his ears and then spat on the floor and then touched his tongue. And decreed, if at all, the word of God says immediately his ears opened and his tongue was loosened. He began to speak. God can use any method of his choice to bring healing to the sick. It can be by mere words, it can be by touching. It can be by spitting and touching you with the spittle. It can be by just waving or any method he wants. Your mind should not be fixed on a particular method because God can use any method. He is powerful. He is omnipotent. At this morning devotion, I can see Jesus touching somebody somewhere and speaking the same word, if at all be opened in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is still in the business of healing. He is still in the business of healing, whatever it is. Jesus has healed cancer. Jesus has healed ulcer. Jesus has healed high blood pressure. Jesus has healed malaria. Jesus has healed kidney failure. Jesus has healed so many and is still healing. Only believe him. Assess him by faith and your own healing will come in the name of Jesus. Amen. Nothing is above him. No matter how long that ailment has persisted. There is nothing dignifying about disease or impediment, but Jesus has come to heal all manner of disease, whatever it is. Our Lord is the God of all flesh, and nothing is impossible with him. Jeremiah 32, verse 27. And Isaiah 53, verse 5 says, By his stripes we are healed. You know, theologians say, Jesus was given 40 strokes of king. And research has proven that diseases are classified into 39. So the extra stroke of king Jesus was given is to take care of any disease that has not been classified. So the word of God is true by his stripes. Whether that disease has been classified, whether it is known or unknown, by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. We are healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. He promises to bandage our wounds and restore our health. Jeremiah 33 verse 6. And his wish above all is for us to prosper and be in good health. 3 John verse 2. Brethren, wherever you are, under the sound of my voice today, healing is coming your way in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Be it physical healing, be it emotional healing, uh, be it spiritual healing. Healing is coming your way and you receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. 
you are healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Whenever the Son of Man shall set you free, you are free indeed. Amen. Finally, the last story there in Mark chapter 8, 1 to 10. Talking about the feeding of the 4,000 with seven loaves of bread and few fishes shows that God is a God of multiplication and he's a God of provision. He is Jehovah Jireh. The crowd that had been with Jesus needed not only the spiritual food. They had been with him three days. They also needed the physical food. Jesus being compassionate and not inhibited by location or economy. Ah, use just seven loaves of bread and few fishes to perform the miracle of feeding multitude. 4,000. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Sometimes we are overwhelmed. And some are even distracted, especially when we have needs that we feel are intractable. We are overwhelmed. We are carried away. We begin to run from pillar to post, seeking for help where there is none. Mm. The good news is that Jesus can meet every of your need. Philippians 4.19 says, God can supply all our needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Again, Philippians 6.7 says, we should be anxious for nothing but by prayer and thanksgiving make our request known to God. You know, when, before the seven loaves of bread and the two fishes were shared, Jesus first of all gave thanks. The Gentiles, some believers, can be distracted or worried. But as children of God, we should give him thanks that he has already met that need. We need to trust God to handle every of our need. No need of running from pillar to post. We need to trust God. And God will meet every of our need in Jesus' name. Amen. For us in Nigeria, considering the cash crunch, considering the economic downturn, Considering that things are very difficult, assessing cash, even when you have the money in the bank, is very difficult. It's quite challenging. But be confident that Jesus will surely meet all our needs. Remember, you have to be his daughter. Surrender to Jesus and make him your father, Lord and master. He is, it is not right to cast the children's bread to the dogs. Therefore, I urge you, my brother, my sister, my mommy, my daddy, my fellow women, come unto him today in faith and present all your needs and problems for his attention. He will happily provide you with the best solutions. And so be it in Jesus' name. Amen. Our prayer today is make a request of anything you need from God using the name of Jesus. Wonderful. Ah, God has given us an open check to present our needs, to make our requests, whatever it is, in faith, and we will receive. Therefore, O oh Lord, I pray as many as are under the sound of my voice, Father, O oh Lord, are presenting their needs today, meet them at the point of their need. Father, O oh Lord, let there be testimonies. There will be testimonies, all to the glory of your name. Thank you, Heavenly Father that truly you are a powerful God, you are a merciful God. We give you all the glory. Be thou exalted and adored. Even as we go forth into today, you will make a name for yourself. Thank you, Heavenly Father. May your name be highly exalted. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you. Bye-bye. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.